density is an important state variable for air. And we will actually use two different kinds of densities, the dry density and the wet density. And it's the dry density that we will use most. The dry density takes the mass of air, so oxygen and nitrogen essentially, and divides that with the total volume. And the total volume also being some water vapor. So the equation looked like this, mass of air without any water divided with the total volume, which also has water in it. The wet density is the more normal kind of density where we take everything that is in the volume and divide that with that volume. And you might think that that should be the most common one to use. But if you think of this room, for example, that I'm standing in, it needs a certain amount of ventilation. And one reason for that is that I <laughs> breathe oxygen all the time. So I need new oxygen to come into my room. And also the carbon dioxide needs to get, go away. So the water doesn't play a part in that, right? So we need a certain amount of oxygen in uh, and the water is not that important there. It is important because it <laughs> occupies space. So the more moist the air is, actually the less space there is for the oxygen. Remember, as soon as I give you a flux uh, in cubic meter, you have to convert that into kilograms uh, because you can't make mass balances in volumes. Now, if we draw uh, the density of the air, it's typically not drawn in a Molière diagram uh, because it becomes so messy with all the lines. So it's often drawn in a separate diagram and it might look like this. So uh, we, have, we have a double x axis, one for the dry uh, density and one for the wet, wet density. So that's why we have something like that. And we also draw uh, these lines for different relative humidities. So the zero humi uh, relative humidity lines for the two are just mirror images of, of the one of the of each other because if you don't have any water at all in the air the dry density must be the same as the wet density right uh, okay so this uh, might be a nice graph to use but if it's drawn together with a Molière diagram it's actually often flipped the other way around like this so that it fits nicely in the small space that's left on the on the paper. Uh, so important if you use the graphs for densities, uh, then keep in mind that there are two different x axes. So you, you need to keep track of that, which is the dry density and which is the wet density, the temperature axis. And then the y axis is typically reversed and you, so you need to keep track of that as well. What you definitely shouldn't do is to look up a table and look for the density of air at a certain temperature because the density of the air will depend on how much water it is in the air.